Hello and welcome to my video all about how to transfer an image to clay using an inkjet printer. Because my laser printed image transfer video was helpful to people I thought I would do one for inkjet printed images as well because most people have an inkjet rather than a laser printer. So I tried a few different methods. One was where I used some matte photo paper and liquid Fimo and I tried that method a few different times changing a little thing each time and I just couldn't get it to work. The only method I could get to work was this one. So I'm going to share that with you now and also give some tips that I found out along the way. Apart from an inkjet printer, the main thing you will need is a sheet of acetate. These sheets seem to be sold under a few different names including transparencies, acetate film, coated polyester film, but if you just search for inkjet transparency or inkjet acetate sheets, you'll find what you're looking for. Make sure that in the description it says that these are suitable for an inkjet printer. Then what you will need to do is just print your image onto one of these acetate sheets. Because the sheet is made of plastic, it will resist the ink rather than absorbing it. So the ink just sits on the surface and that's why it can then be transferred onto the clay. Normally when you print an inkjet image onto paper, the paper obviously absorbs that ink. That's why you normally can't use inkjet printed images to transfer it onto clay. One problem I did run into was that for some of the images I printed, the ink beaded up on the surface of the acetate. As you can see from this photo I took, the ink just forms droplets on the surface of the acetate and doesn't flow into a nice even layer of colour. I found that it worked perfectly fine where the area of colour was large, or at least large enough for the ink to flow outwards into a pool. The problem seemed to occur mostly where there were lines, just single thin fine lines within the image. As you can see from the skull image here, the beading is pretty bad, although on the wider areas of yellow, for instance, there isn't beading. So it's just flat areas of colour that are perfectly fine and lines, especially fine lines with no background colour, are the problem. So to combat the beading, what I would say is try and pick an image that's not just an outline but instead, if it does have an outline, that it also has a background colour also. If you're set on making a line drawing, especially fine lines, then what I would suggest is experimenting with your print quality. I printed my images on high quality printing, so obviously that's going to use more ink. If you start at high quality and it's beading on your image, then try printing at standard quality and if that still doesn't work then try printing at fast or economical print quality. If this doesn't solve your problem then I think you'll probably have to alter your image to eliminate any fine lines that don't have a background colour. Obviously what you want to do is strike a balance between print quality and also not having that beaded effect because the higher the quality, the more ink that's used on the images, and so the more ink that will transfer to your clay. So if you pick the lowest quality printing, that will transfer the least amount of ink onto your clay, and so you'll have a slightly paler image. So what you want is to use the highest print quality you can to create as vivid an image as you can, but without creating that beading effect. Another thing I just want to note is that I left this print out for a few days without using it between printing it and transferring it onto the clay and it didn't affect the transfer at all. So don't worry if you print it out and then you don't get around to transferring it to clay for a while because that won't affect it. Just try and keep it away from dust. And the last thing is that I would suggest only printing one image per sheet. This is because whilst you're working with one image, it's difficult to stop the others from smudging. So I would definitely suggest one image per sheet. And now let's get on with learning how to do this. Before I do the transfer, 
All I've done so far is condition some soft Fimo white clay and rolled it out, then used a cookie cutter to cut out an oval shape. I then removed the excess clay from around the outside. It's very important whenever doing image transfer to make sure your clay is properly conditioned because dry crumbly clay won't work half as well with this method. The smoother, the more conditioned and the fresher the clay is that you're using, the better your transfer should be. The actual method itself is so quick and easy, all you have to do is take your acetate sheet, turn it around so it's ink side down and then just put it onto your clay. Try and put it straight down, don't move it once it comes into contact with the clay otherwise you'll get a smudge. So this bit you have to be careful about, you have to put it straight down and don't move it from side to side at all. Once it's on your clay you can use your finger to just go from the center outwards making sure again that you don't move the acetate. Once you've made sure that all of the ink has been transferred how you want it then carefully peel off the acetate and your image should have been transferred and that's all there is to it. Now you need to make sure that you don't touch that ink because it still can smudge even when on the clay. I then take a narrow straw, push it through the clay and twist to make a hole in my charm. You don't have to do this if you don't want. Then I simply put it in the oven and bake following the instructions on my clay. You then should add some kind of sealer or varnish in order to protect your image. I like to use Rust-Oleum's clear coat spray which gives a really nice matte finish. You can also use any kind of clay varnish or whatever you normally like to use to finish off your clay pieces. And that's basically all there is to it. The last thing I want to add is that this method is actually a really budget friendly method because you can reuse the acetate sheets. You might be able to just clean them with water but what I use is nail polish removing pads which have acetone on them. So I just take one of the pads and wipe all the ink off and then I wash the sheet in water and leave it to dry completely. And then you can just reuse that same sheet over and over again. So I hope this video has been helpful to you and I really hope you have fun experimenting with it. Thank you very much for watching.